we right now may, I think we control around, like I've already said before, around 2% of the wealth in the nation. And that's horrible. Between 40 million people, 2% of, of the wealth. So we need to concentrate more on financial literacy, things that will help us be able to save our communities. Because in my opinion, financial literacy is so important because the amount of gentrification that is happening within our black communities. Our communities, our landmarks, and our history is being erased from us. And I believe that us being able to buy our neighborhoods and control everything that happens within our neighborhoods and really, really practicing group economics will help us be able to save our neighborhoods, our history, our memories. If not, 20, 30, 50 years from now, we won't be able to really, really show our children things that we were able to see growing up and some of the things that we're still able to see now. One book I recommend is Black Labor, White Wealth by Dr. Claude Anderson, giving great information on wealth building and strategies and, and things that you can do within our community to help us be able to get to where we need to be. Stop being laborers and start being uh, owners, entrepreneurs, and people who are controlling their own destiny. If you, even if you don't want to be an entrepreneur, you can still control your own destiny, have your money work for you. Powernomics is another book by Dr. Claude Anderson will help you put uh, gain principles and put the, put the principles in motion to help us being able to build up what we need to. It's Powernomics by Dr. Claude Anderson. Um, another book that I like is Think and Grow Rich, A Black Choice by Dr. Dennis Kimbrough. What's cool about this book is Dr. Dennis Kimbrough was actually the speaker at my graduation when I graduated from FAMU. And the young lady that I was seeing at the time, she brought this book for me. And I guess it was just a coincidence. As you can see the condition of the book, I read it a lot. But another book. Um, Black Economics by Jawan, Jawanza Kanjufu. And Black Economic Solutions for Economic and Community Empowerment. Another great book that I think you should get and read. Um, the Richest Man in Babylon, I recommend this book just because of the principles, the money saving principles and the, the ideas that it give you about money and the ideas about your power over money and how money works for you. So that's another book, The Richest Man in Babylon, George S. Uh, Clayson. Then Black Economic Development, F Floroni A. Coles Jr. is the author of this book, Black Economic Development. Another book that you can read, get the principles of this get the information to be able to use it within our community every advantage that we can get we need to get and we need to spread this information like wildfire and not just spread the information just going around saying hey I got this information you should do it but actually utilizing the information uh, putting those principles to use to gain economic power to gain economic stability to be able to really control our communities Nobody can gentrify our communities if we own our communities unless you decide to sell out. And we know that's been happening. So I'm, I'm speaking to the ones who are not in the mindset of selling out. Now, making the best deals or putting yourself in a position to make the best deals and, the, and, the, and whatever else we need to do economically to, to be on top, those are the things that we need to be doing, we need to be learning. But as black people, it is not our birthright to be broke or poor. We should not be suffering in the physical realm, waiting on our abundance when we die. No, we, we should be getting that now. We should be living that now. Heaven is here. You create your own heaven on earth, right? With your mindset and your actions and everything that you're doing. But we can get our economics together as black people. Group, group economics is not hard. We just make it hard because we are, we're so conditioned to be consumers. We're so conditioned to be loyal to brands. We're so conditioned to give our money out to other people. Um, we have what we need. We have so many brilliant people within our communities. It's just the conditioning. We're so conditioned to be consumers. Just consume, 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 consume. I have to have this. I have to have this. I have to have this. Now, I'm not saying you shouldn't have things. I'm not saying black folks shouldn't look good. I'm not saying none of these things. But what I am saying is being economically responsible, economically smart. If the things that we're doing 
aren't really helping us stop doing them we keep like i said before we keep talking about our potential buying power and we're not focusing on the real buying power that we lack we want to focus on well we 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 could possibly do this but in reality we we we're not doing it what's stopping us from doing it habits conditioning doing the same thing over and over and over and over and over again because we think that's what we're supposed to do. I'm whenever I get some 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 money or a little bit more money than I used to have, go out and buy me a Benz. Go out and buy me a BMW. Go out and buy this, Louis this, Gucci that, all these brands of, of people in industries and corporations who don't give a damn about us and our communities who will come into our communities and just wipe us the hell out. Just think about that. You're going to spend your money the way you want to spend your money. You don't have to listen to me. All I'm talking about is economic empowerment for yourself and for the people around you. And if you're tired of seeing things the way it is, hell, do something damn different.